Okay, so I get asked this question a lot and it's all around what's the deal with alcohol and the risk for cancer because there are some studies that actually show that perhaps alcohol, things like wine for example, may have some health benefits and then other studies that are saying the opposite. I know sort of why it could be confusing here. Let's break this down and simplify it. What the research is actually showing us is that there is a direct link with alcohol and cancer risk, whether it's primary risk or recurrence risk after you've already had cancer. And one of the big recommendations is actually for everyone to either avoid or limit alcoholic consumption as much as possible. Now let's look at the Canadian guidelines for how much is actually considered to be okay. What you'll see in the guidelines is actually that there is no level where there is no risk. The way that they categorize it is that zero to two drinks per week is actually considered low risk for different diseases like cancer, for example. When you get to the three to six standard drinks per week, that's when it's considered moderate risk where the risk of developing several different cancers increases. Cancers like breast, colorectal, liver-related cancers, esophageal, mouth, and so many more, that risk increases at that three to six drinks per week. Now, when we go to seven or more standard drinks per week, that's considered high risk according to the Canadian guidelines and raises more of those risks for cancer, but as well as risk for heart disease and stroke as well. So according to this particular guideline, which was just changed in 2023, there is no level of consumption that actually has no risk and is considered safe. And this is a difference from the guidelines that we had prior to this, where they actually said that a standard weekly drink limit of 10 drinks for women was actually okay to have. Now, there's another aspect about alcohol that all women should know about, especially if you have an estrogen-driven type cancer or a history of that in your family. So one key thing alcohol can do to women and to men as well is actually increase estrogen. One particular study actually showed that alcohol consumption can actually increase estrogen levels by 16 to 20%. We also see other studies that show that sex hormone concentrations were actually 10 to 25% higher among postmenopausal women consuming greater than or equal to 20 grams of alcohol per day, which is really just a standard drink. Uh, a standard drink will have about 14 grams of alcohol, and that's in comparison with non-drinkers. Another study actually showed that it could potentially also increase aromatase activity. Aromatase is an enzyme that actually changes other hormones like testosterone and so forth into estrogens, and it's the primary way that postmenopausal women will produce estrogen. This is especially important if you're on an aromatase inhibitor already like latrozole, anastrozole, or exemestane because again those medications actually work as an aromatase inhibitors trying to inhibit or block off the actions of this aromatase from being able to produce more estrogens from other types of hormones. Of course all of these things are actually really important to note because alcohol doesn't just impact cancer risk or heart risk. Alcohol has many different impacts on our bodies, including changes in hormone, including increase that chronic inflammatory process, decreasing metabolism, impacting sleep, and so many other things. Now, what is considered a standard drink in the first place? One 12 ounce bottle or can of beer, five ounce glass of wine, as well as a 1.5 ounce shot of whiskey, gin, or rum are all considered one standard drink. If you're trying to avoid or limit your consumption, how can we do this? For my patients and my clients, we really talk a lot about things like mocktails, for example, just taking out the alcohol component on certain cocktails and drinking it that way instead. We also discuss having some of these drinks on special occasions only and really reserving it for those times uh, versus on a weekly basis. We look at maybe other products like dealkalinized wines, for example, or beers even that you may be able to enjoy. Now, research has actually shown us that dealkalinized wine may actually have health benefits minus all the health risks that come with alcohol. If you like a dealkalinized wine, please let us know in the comment section so that other people that are also looking for a healthier choice might be able to have an option there. I haven't found one myself, but I'm also not a drinker at all. So my taste buds are a little bit different. I hope that's helpful to you and I'll see you in the next one.